Hey everyone! So part of my new direction is to encourage people to be the best versions of themselves. To working towards doing in your life what you love to do and also expressing yourself in the way you want to express yourself. I personally found that one of the best ways to do that is actually to spend time with people who already has achieved that. And one of such persons for me was Coach John Kavanaugh, a famous, one of the best in the world coach of mixed martial arts. He has an incredible story of how he got to that point and also he has an incredible personality and mentality, part of which is the philosophy which he calls win or learn. And today we are in Dublin, right now actually next to the famous SBG Ireland, Coach John Kavanaugh's gym, one of the best MMA gyms in the world. And that is exactly where we're going right now to meet the man himself, to spend a little bit of time with him, to talk about his story, to talk about his life philosophy. And then after we finish up, I'll tell you a story of how we met and a few other cool facts. So if you're interested in this journey, stick around. You just can't get rid of me. No! <laughs> so this is the gym. The gym. This is where I trained for three months myself before. Also, this is Saturday afternoon, so it's empty com compared to what happens here usually. Not only professional fighters train here, unlike what some people think, but actually there's a lot of regular people, various classes, both uh, fitness and martial arts. So it's a really, really nice and welcoming place. But right now, instead of training, we're going to go to the meeting. Thank you very much for finding time. I know you're super busy and- Always time for you, Ocas. Uh, thank you. What I wanted to present to everyone is a bit of your story. What I'm very excited about is people becoming the best versions of themselves and working towards that, manifesting that as into spaces like SBG Ireland, growing other people and, and just yeah, making a difference in that way. But everything usually starts small and starts from just mm, a certain passion. So I read the book, <laughs> so I know some of it, but not everyone does. From what I know, martial arts were an important part of your life from very early. Uh, they were a part of my life from very early, but not important. Okay. Um, I got into martial arts on one level or another, probably to please my dad. Mm. Um, he kind of got me started, and then it just was a habit. But I didn't, enj I wasn't like, oh, it's Tuesday night, I'm going to do karate. It was just, uh, well, okay. I've done it for 10 years, I'll just keep going. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, uh, I, I would say I didn't enjoy it until I found MMA. Okay. And then when I found jujitsu, then I was obsessed, then I was... Yes. Every minute of every day, there was nothing else I could think about. But that was, mm. I suppose I was 18, 18 or 19, when I started training MMA slash Jiu-Jitsu, whatever you want to describe it. Can you say a little bit about how did you manage to do that? Because it was a world where MMA barely existed at the day. As the story goes, in my best-selling book, available in five <laughs> languages, uh, link on my Twitter, yeah. you can still buy it. Uh, I, got, I got badly beat up on a night out. I... Went into depression after that. I kind of locked myself away for a couple of months. And then I figured, right, I've got to do two things. I'm going to live in my bedroom for the next 50 years or I'm going to do something about it. So I started trying to do a little bit of research on other forms of martial arts training and self-defense training. And I kind of bounced around from a few different systems. Mm -hmm. And then almost by accident, one night I rented out UFC 1. I thought it was a movie, actually, at the start. And I saw it was like eight men in an octagon and all this kind of it's like, yeah, it's, <laughs> what is this? And I watched it, and then, of course, as everybody knows, it was Hoist Gracie, mm -hmm. and the parts that was very appealing to me was that he was one of the smallest guy, if not the smallest guy in the mm -hmm. tournament, and he was clearly winning with a system. He wasn't winning by swinging his hands wildly and he'd clip somebody and he'd go out. He had a very step-by-step -step system, mm -hmm. and I'm a step-by-step -step type of guy, engineer, mathematician, mm -hmm. so that appealed to me. And there was no one doing it in Ireland at the time, so I did the next best thing I thought, which was judo. Mm. And I did some wrestling. And then when there'd be seminars on every now and again, somebody Brazilian would move, come over to the UK and teach. I'd travel over and I'd learn that way. And I'd, I'd cut articles out on magazines that had a technique on it. This is, there was a time before YouTube and all of that kind of stuff. So um, you learn techniques from magazines. So a slow process, a slow learning process. Yeah, I started fighting, started doing some MMA fights, started doing security work so I could test it on drunk guys, see how easy I could make them fall over. And then, of course, the big one, meeting Matt Thornton from Straight Blast mm. Gym in November 2001 in South Africa. And the following summer, summertime 2002, I became SBG Ireland. And the rest, as they say, is history. 
that is actually something I really wanted to ask you about. And we spoke about it together. It's written a bit in the book as well. But the, the moment where you decided to become a professional instructor, coach, and that was not a logical decision based on the majority of people. I mean, you were studying, uh, you just finished. Yeah, so while I, I kind of, I began my, I, I, did, I took five years to, to complete my uh, degree in engineering. When I started the degree, I also started Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and MMA training kind of properly. Mm -hmm. Now, when I say properly, it was still me and a group of guys just meeting and rolling, sometimes on a wooden floor, sometimes on carpet. So still very haphazard, but purely because I was very obsessive about it, I got pretty good mm -hmm. in, it, in, in that five-year period. Certainly, I was a wizard compared to anybody in Ireland. I could like a roll anybody in Ireland and I was destroying them back in the day. This was when like a blue belt was like, oh, is he a real blue belt? So when I graduated, I said, well, I have my whole life to be an engineer. Let's give, let's teach for a year. Mm -hmm. So I rented out a very small garage in Fibsborough, northern, north of Dublin. Yeah. I was supposed to give it a year and if it doesn't work out, I'll be an engineer. That was 16, what age am I? Six, 19, 20 years ago or something. I still seem to be still, I'm still seem to be struggling along. Did you get support from someone in terms of like, uh, not necessarily financial, but emotional? Have people believe No, in everybody said I was a nutcase. My mother cried when she came to see my first gym. My dad shook his head and said, you're wasting your time. Everybody was very genuine with me and very mm. honest with me. They just couldn't understand how... Because UFC was nothing at the time. There's no other MMA organizations. My mother was convinced he needed to be in Brazil to do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And they all train on the beach and it's warm over there. <laughs> what, no one's going to want to do this in Ireland. It's freezing cold. Yeah, I, I, I'd probably at this age now, if I was talking to 23, 24-year-old me, yeah. I probably would say, well, you know. <laughs> that sounds so good. <laughs> Good luck, but uh, it's probably not going to work out. Yeah, so no financial support, uh, no emotional support, mm. but I didn't really need either. When was the moment where you looked at your life and you said, it does make sense, it did work out, and you... I give you a shout when that day comes along. <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine there. Right? Um, I don't know if there was like a day, um, you know, it was... Just felt right. Yeah. Uh, not, until not very long ago, hmm. and I'm talking only a short number of years ago, I'm 43 now, just hmm. turned 43, hmm. until my late 30s, if I was only in debt of, say, a thousand euros per month, hmm. I thought it was great. So I had, a, I had an overdraft on my account up till about 4,000 euros. So every month I'd have to pay out my home, my apartment rent, my gym rent, my gym staff, wages. Mm. eat if by the end of all that i was i was negative 1000 or negative 1500 i'd be like awesome i, I did I, I didn't go into like negative 5000 which would happen as, <laughs> as, which has definitely happened mm. so i felt successful the whole way i felt it was working the whole time mm. <laughs> again looking back now probably wasn't the best thing in the world mm. i probably started getting a bit more serious about it all when i when i met orla we're seven years together now and I, how do you go about getting a mortgage and how do I go about running my gym as a business as opposed to just a hobby? Mm -hmm. So I, I made some decisions then. And uh, thankfully now, I'm not quite as in debt every month. <laughs> uh, well, two, two more questions that I have. And one is uh, you're known for your philosophy, which is win or learn. Uh, can you say to a person, an, an uninitiated, uninitiated person, uh, how would you explain what that type of mentality means? <laughs> it's a, um, a difficult question. Or... It's kind of like it's the, the, the meaning is in the name. But so here's the thing. You're going to have to recognize you're going to lose. Hmm. So if you are deciding today, I'm going to start a, a coffee company. Mm -hmm. Or it doesn't matter what it is. Start martial arts. That losses are inevitable. And I think so it starts from a very young age that we get we get taught that winning and losing is 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 it's they're very different and we must do all that we can to avoid losing mm -hmm. because it's the worst thing in the world mm -hmm. even this thing now where some some schools they do um, participation trophies mm -hmm. now what's that telling the kid it might initially sound like it's a it's a nice thing to do mm -hmm. well nobody felt like they lost you know everybody got the same trophy and, and everybody goes home happy 
But I actually think it says the opposite. I think a, a, an adult is saying to a kid, losing is so terrible, it's such a bad feeling and such a bad thing to go through, we're going to protect you from that mm. and you're never going to have to deal with losing. Mm. The reality is, and a 10-year-old kid can tell you this, you're eventually going to lose. Mm. You'll eventually go into a, a job, looking for jobs or go into a real race where, yes, the guy that wins gets a trophy and the guy that loses gets nothing. But the thing is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that that day the other person got one step ahead of you. It's fine as long as you are losing up towards success. So every loss, we take a lesson from it, we get a little bit better, and then our next loss is a little bit less, and our next loss is a little bit less. So learning. Don't have in your head that you lose your way down to quitting. We're losing our way up to succeeding. So when we're going upwards, we have another word for that. We call it learning. Yeah. So when the guys, when they came to me about writing a book and I was like, oh, okay, I'll write a book. And they're like, what, what do you want if the title? I was like, I don't really know. And they said, how about my life outside the cage? Mm. And I said, well, that's about the worst name of a book <laughs> I've ever heard. <laughs> what do you think? I'd spend my day in a cage and I just about get out of the cage <laughs> at nighttime. It was a ridiculous <laughs> name. So then I actually did put a bit into time mm. about what I am doing in here and what the whole point of this is. Mm. And I think a beautiful thing, and Jiu Jitsu is very physical embodiment of this philosophy because if you come to me and you say um okay john i'm starting brazilian jiu-jitsu one of my goals my immediate goal is to get a blue belt in jiu-jitsu but i want to get it without ever losing along the way because i hate losing my i got participation trophies my whole life i never put myself in a scenario where i was going to lose so the first time i step on the mat there and i lose i get tapped out I'm going to feel terrible. Yeah. So can you tell me how to get from white belt to blue belt without ever going through that horrible feeling? Mm -hmm. Well, as you well know, mm -hmm. that's a impossible yeah. scenario. Mm -hmm. So we very early learn, and I think it's why people are very addicted to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, we actually start to fall in love with losing. Mm -hmm. Because we know every time we lose, every time we get caught on the mat, mm -hmm. it's just that little bit step forward. It's that incremental improvement mm. that comes from that so what i what i jokingly say i train the best losers in the world yeah. that my fight team i try to impress upon them and i try to encourage them and it's, it happens from our kids up until you know not everybody that trains with me for 10 years is going to end up being a millionaire professional fighter that's going to be a very very tiny tiny percent most of them are going to do this for a part of their life maybe win an amateur world title or something and then they're going to be in the real world. And if there was one thing I want to send them off with is how to strangle people, of course, <laughs> um, but also how to approach any new... If, if, I, if I knew I tomorrow wanted to um, learn a new skill, like how to swim, I already know I'd have to go through. I already know I'd have to go through a process of a lot of micro losses, yeah. being clumsy in the pool, getting frustrated with it, you know, trying, trying to follow instruction, trying to get meaningful reps in being frustrated seeing the guy in the lane over going zoop, 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 whizzing up and down while i'm splashing about mm -hmm. i already know they, these are all the losses i'd have to suffer and i would gladly go through them because i know after a certain number of years and a certain number of purposeful train purposeful practice that i will be that guy that's whizzing up and down because i know that's just how physical skill skill or any type of skill mental uh, strength as well is acquired through that through small losses which make our resolve that little bit stronger and just making yourself do what you know you have to do and then you will reap the rewards. It was a big philosophy for me as well. I was always like, fail faster. Just to allow yourself to expose yourself to your, your lax. A superhero strength, if I could have for a future child, mm -hmm. would be that they never feel embarrassed. Mm -hmm. That would be a superpower to a, to a young child. To never feel embarrassed, never worry about trying something and like, oh, mm -hmm. what will they do? Will they laugh if I fall? Imagine a child that just doesn't feel that, that just slips, falls, people giggle, and they go, I did look silly there. <laughs> but watch me do it again. Mm -hmm. I'll be a little bit better this time. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to try and impress is to know that you're going to look, not that you're going to look silly. But here's the big secret we all looked a bit silly, mm -hmm. we all looked a bit bad when we're trying to do something new. <laughs> But if you, want, if you want that skill, if you want to be as good as you are at your YouTube stuff, um, as good as anybody at fighting, as good as someone playing the guitar, whatever, you're going you're gonna to have a period of, um, of being a bit clumsy with it at the start. So embrace it. Be the best clumsy guy in the world. 
And that's, I feel, what some people, some people forget or don't see when you, they look at a person who succeeded, per se, they kind of ignore the fact that there was a beginning. They're like, oh, you were lucky. It's like, oh, it, all, it was always easy for you. But it's, it seems like it's never the case. People just don't like to admit that everybody has to go for it. Well, it's, it's easier to say, I can't do that because that person was so much more skillful than me. Mm. It's easier to make excuses for yourself. Mm. And I'm not saying, that might, might sound harsh. I don't, I don't really mean it to because it's not for everybody. Mm. But it's, there is a part that is, it's easier to accept your failures and your inability to try something if you just say that the person who did make it was A, lucky, and look, does play, certainly plays a part in it. But B, didn't go through that five to ten year, mm -hmm. you know, white belt mm -hmm. stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you want to convince yourself of that, you can. I think you have a great quote, which is well known that you were and took you 20 years to become an overnight success. <laughs> so because that's kind of it as well. People are like, ah, you're lucky. It's like, no, it took you 20 yeah, years. To yeah, become. yeah. They've seen my life uh, even eight, nine years ago, I'm, you know, 35 broke broke mm. in debt every month playing with the idea of jacking it in and yeah mm. and then uh, but it's one of those things and many stories there's so many stories out there of mm. guys just mm. banging their head against the door for 10 years and then suddenly whoop, it gives and you're like oh mm -hmm. I'm on the other side <laughs> but just try every day just to prove that a little bit uh, work hard don't get too obsessed with future goals they're all make believe a make-believe future just make today good make today your best be a good person today help people today work hard today and that future will take care of itself and the very last thing uh, because i'm expanding my audience some people that are watching this they're not doing martial arts uh, and something a <gasps> imagine that it doesn't make sense <laughs> and the hell wrong martial it? arts journey <laughs> uh, but uh, something i like to mention is that the gym uh, a lot of people think it's just professional fighters, but it's pro professional fighters, as great as the team is, it's a small percentage of the whole community. And uh, But the people who are considering to do something with their life in terms of physicality, who would you recommend MMA to, like uh, in, in regards to regular everyday person? Only to humans. So <laughs> if you're a canine watching this, <laughs> don't yeah. try. Yeah, I don't know. Your joints don't move that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do think martial arts does seem to attract. I think if you were to say, um, you know, this was a rugby mm. podcast, and you're saying like, well, who would you recommend rugby to? I think that is for a certain type, mm -hmm. type of physical person. But if you're in an MMA school and there's like a kickboxing program, a BJJ program, you know, as as we have here, we can trek, we have mm. yoga. I would say, go down and visit whatever is close to you. Mm. You know, go down and visit wherever is close to you. You don't have to be day one go in and do a class, mm. that's a big commitment. Yeah. But day one might be going down and walking past the building. So have that as day one. <laughs> there you go. That, that's all you have to do with day one. I'm not asking you to do anything else. Mm. Just walk past, look in the window and walk on. Mm. And then go home and take that off your box. Mm. The next day, maybe your thing is you're going to open the door and look inside. <laughs> and just do that. Do that for day two. Day three, you go in, you say hello to somebody. Mm. And you will very quickly get a sense of whether or not that place is for you. And, and people, different people have different personalities. For me, when I go into somewhere, I like to be greeted by someone that looks happy, yeah. that's smiling, that's welcoming. I'd like to look around and see people on the mats that seem to be enjoying themselves. I'm not so much about going to somewhere where it's a bunch of knuckleheads damaging each other. You usually have choice and I'll check out their websites and I'll, I'll do what I just said there. I'll go and pop my head in and, and see what the kind of greeting is like. If that's for you and you go in and you have a good buzz off it, if not, try ballroom dancing, mm. rock climbing, whatever. Mm. Do something. Be active. It's better than the alternative. Mm. Sitting at home and staring at Instagram pictures, it's not good for your head. Mm. Get out, meet people. Do something. But to just put that final point, MMA is much more accessible than people think. It's not just the young 20-year-old guys physically fit. It can be everyone, a mother, a, an old, elder, a bit older person. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's, Probably the jiu-jitsu side would appeal to a wider audience. You know, if you're in an MMA school, the jiu-jitsu program is usually the, big, the biggest. Mm. Now, we do have the warrior training program, W2W here as well. And we have 
guys in their 50s that are doing that. They're training every every day for 100 classes and then having a competitive match in MMA. So there is that opening too. But number one, you know, don't, don't think that far ahead. Well, when am I doing a fight? I think, mm. I think people, when they have a new goal to try martial arts or something, because they look so far into the future, it almost paralyzes them on today. Mm. Today's goal is to go down and say hello to somebody. And who the hell knows? You could be looking at this in a few years' time and say, oh, that knocked me onto something. And I'm a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu now, or I'm an amateur kickboxer, or I did a, a, a warrior training program, and I ended up doing a competitive MMA fight. Who the hell knows? Thank you so much. <laughs> good seeing you again. Good to be here. <laughs> so I hope you see this example as a good example that great achievements are usually followed by great mindset. Yet that mindset doesn't come from nowhere. It is usually developed by constant striving forward, by constant moving even if you lose, which again is one of the reasons why I love John's philosophy so much. And he's such a great embodiment and representation of that. It reflects my story really well as well because I always allowed myself to fail. Even now I'm experimenting and risking with this new step, knowing that I may fail, but also realizing that's just going to be a lesson. In the end, I could say that I am a sum of all my failures that eventually led me to lessons, which led me to success. So once more, I hope you will take inspiration from that and you will apply this awesome philosophy to your life too. And now before I finish up, I promised you to tell you the story of how I met John. There's the long, medium and short story and I'm going to give you a short version. And that is that when uh, I was in Atlanta in the States, I was filming one of the SBG camps and he was one of the coaches there. And obviously I went to him and I said, could you please talk to me for 10 minutes in front of the camera? It was so great that he agreed. But after our talk, he mentioned to me that he wants to restart his YouTube channel. And I had this idea in my mind that maybe I should offer him to drop by Ireland Dublin and just you know help him out film some videos for him but a different part of my mind said ah that's a stupid idea you know what if he will say no that's gonna be embarrassing but having that philosophy of allowing yourself to fail John was actually leaving the room I, I decided you know what even if I fail at least I will have tried at least I will say what's on my mind and so as he was stepping out I said and by the way John you know what you know I could write an email give you some ideas of well, what would work for your channel and come down to Dublin for a few days and film some videos for you and he looked at me thought for a second and said okay send me that email and email after email eventually that led to me spending three months in Dublin uh, having a chance to travel with John film some of his journeys for his YouTube channel train with him and just having this incredible unique experience and now when I look back I realize if I wouldn't have said anything to him if I would have been silent that day then none of that would have happened and it happened all because I allowed myself to try and be ready to fail if I had to. So just to wrap up this episode, as you know, this is a new direction and I'm still searching for what works best for what will be a great mix of what I really want to tell to people and what people are interested to watch. So do let me know if you like this episode, if you want some more, if you have some feedback or ideas of what you would like to see. But uh, again, I hope you got a lot from this incredible meeting. And as always, I will see you in the next journey.